In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to your Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i Wi-Fi and troubleshoot the connection issues. The first thing we want to do is you have to understand the status codes of the uh, that it's showing here. And this is going to be your, your first step because if there's anything wrong, it's going to be showing you here primarily. So now if we flip this around, in order to connect into Wi-Fi, you want to turn it to the app mode. And so this will enable the Wi-Fi and, allow, and it'll create a Wi-Fi network and then you can log on with your smartphone. Now what you should see is you should see both of these lights slowly flashing. And if that is the case, then it is has a network and it's waiting for a connection. Now here in the app, you can see under my networks, we have the SynScan Wi-Fi and that's because I have connected on it before and then we can go ahead and connect on that now here's where we have a little bug this should go steady saying that it is actually connected and for some reason sometimes it will and sometimes it won't now let's I'm gonna simulate a problem unable to join. So what's going on? Well, I've purposely put in a different battery here that is not matched and it's not quite uh, the same capacity as the rest of these batteries. And so one of two things are going to occur. You're either going to get an error like this or if I put in an even weaker battery because I know this one's weak, you're going to get this condition. It has a quick flash instead of the long steady flashes. And that's because it's able to correctly identify that it cannot, that the voltage is not high enough for this particular battery pack in order to make it work. And so here's one way that you can fix this. Obviously, changing the batteries are great. But if you're out in the field and you don't have another set of batteries, I suggest you carry around uh, one of these little uh, battery packs. They're real small. You can put them in your pocket. They don't take a lot of room. And then we can just plug in the USB charger, turn it on, and now we have a strong, slow, steady flash of both of them, which is correct because we're powered off the USB. And the advantage of doing this method is that now you can get into the console app and this will give you enough power so that you can program it and you can also run it. But, you know, one of these is not very big, and I found that uh, depending on the model, if you take the batteries out on a real small one like this, it may not run the tracker. So I suggest that you leave the batteries installed and use this as, like as a supplement. Okay, let me demonstrate that. So I've got the little one here. This is just a tiny one, and let's just take a battery out. All right, now it's gonna run a little bit, uh, but what's gonna happen here is in just about 30 seconds or whatever, then this is just going to shut off. And then here, just after, well, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 seconds, this thing powered off. And I had just charged it all the way up. And so that's really annoying. And so I would only do this little one if you just want to do as a supplement, but if you want to actually run it, then get a bigger one. Now I've already reviewed this one in uh, a previous video a couple weeks ago and I absolutely love this. This is uh, big enough to run my EQ mod, my Skywatcher EQM35 Pro and I can run it all night with this and then I've been testing it on this one and it can run it for days. And so um, here we, we don't have the battery in so there it's, we, I mean we're missing one so there's not, no connection. And now this just, this is just so powerful. It doesn't matter what you want to do, it'll work. And um, so it depends on what you want to do. If you're willing to pack around a bigger one, maybe one, maybe not quite this big, cause this is 83 watt hours. I mean, this is a large one. Maybe you want to get one that's 20 or something like that. It'll fit in your pocket. But if you only want to do one, I would suggest this one. And so this is a talent cell. I bought a lithium uh, iron phosphate version because I want the ultimate in safety. And 83 watt hours is below the TSA requirement of 100 so I can travel with this. And I'm just done. It has a nine volt, a 12 volt, 
and a five volt output and then it has just has a standard switch so none of this auto power on or maybe it will or maybe it won't depending on the output current you turn the switch on it runs that's just all there is to it i don't need to mess around with a critical application that's going to try and monitor whether or not i'm really plugged into something if i want it on i want it on and so that's why i like this one now here's a situation that you might run into i know that the battery is good but i've got a spinning beach ball here so one thing you might try is to connect to another network like my ISI Air and then go back and you might have to do this a couple of times and then now we have a check mark I don't know why it does that it is really annoying but that is a potential way of sort of getting around this and I've been playing around with it trying to find the root cause can't seem to find the root cause but this does work now we're not connected so we go over here and then it's going to search and connect and then now we're going to go now here's a little trick that you can uh, use you see, there's down in the left hand corner there's the voltage and that's your USB power supply at any point in time if you want to press that if it says updated power level you're good to go if it says communication error then you're not connected even though your screen may look like mine so this button here doesn't always refresh and it seems to be a bug with the app and it's really weird but anyway this one always works if you always press that then you will know whether you're connected or not so this video is really about how to get connected I'm not really going to go into all of the details, but just in a very quick overview, there is a lot you can do. And one of the features that I like is this manual control. And this is actually a pretty quick slew. Um, here you can move your mount fairly quickly. See, we've already moved a degree here in just a few seconds. And if you compare that to the slew rate that is actually on the side when you're in, say, the Star Tracker mode, it's only 12 times side reel, and this is way faster than that here. So when you're trying to fine tune your connection, I really recommend you using this uh, to avoid having to run the clutches. And so then you can do uh, various astrophotography modes, and just keep in mind that anything that you program in here and you press run, it'll actually store that value on the star tracker so that you don't need this app the next time. So you can, uh, Program the, the Star Tracker while you're in your hotel or whatever if you're traveling and then you can just go out and just press the buttons on the side and it'll just run the pre-program. So anyway, that's it for this video and the next time I'll go through some of these other ones in a little more detail and I hope you found that helpful.